Welcome back. In this video we're going to be running through Camera Raw, uh, making sure you understand everything in there so you can start editing like a boss. Right, to get to Camera Raw we're basically just going to double click on our raw file on the computer. It's going to take you into this menu here. Um, there is a lot of things going on in this menu, but it's super simple when you break it down. Um, everyone's workflow is different, but my workflow is Camera Raw is designed for building your photo to edit. It's correcting the exposure, making sure the white balance is on point, and just prepping it to then start your creative process in Photoshop. So. We're just going to run through all of the things in Camera Raw, uh, which ones I would recommend that you use, which ones I recommend that you don't use, uh, and basically just show what everything does. Camera Raw is like Lightroom. Uh, everything you'll find in Camera Raw, you will find in Lightroom as well. So it's pretty easy to transition from learning this, understanding this, to be able to take a photo, come home, punch it through these settings I'm going to show you in a minute and then you're going to have a photo that you'll be able to show. So let's jump in. So we've gone ahead and opened our photo. Uh, it's going to open up into Camera Raw, which is this window here. So up on the far right side here, we've got all these different options. Uh, the basic correction panel, the crop tool, spot removal, adjustment brush, graduated filter, radial filter, red eye correction, so what you're basically only going to be using is this basic correction panel here, the occasional brush and graduated filters as well as op, uh, radial filters. Um, so running through what we have in the basic correction, it's designed and set up in a workflow where it's top down and this is typically the way you would approach this image um, by going through these things from a top down way. So to start with the very top thing we have is white balance. Um, sometimes the camera nails it, sometimes it doesn't, but in this example if I just click this little icon here and press it on different areas of the screen, you notice the white balance is changing because of where I'm pressing. So if I was to click on white, something that's as close to pure white as possible, it's going to give me the closest representation of what it looked like on that day. And then from there, if you're not quite happy, you can use the temperature and tint sliders to just manually tweak it a little bit more. This is where you get your stylistic looks from um, and it's a personal preference about what you want. So moving down from that, we're going to try and correct the next things, which is exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks. So you can see up in our histogram up here, um, the blacks aren't clipped yet. So if I move that down, you can see it clips there. So you basically want your black point as low as possible without clipping it. Same as your white point. If I bring that up till it starts clipping. Right about there. So you can see that's made a massive impact on the wave itself. Um, and from there, we might just try and lower our highlights a little bit. With a histogram, you want to kind of make sure your information is spread out ac across the entire platform. Um, obviously, this image is dark and light, so we're getting a lot of information at the dark end and a lot of information at the white end. Um, from here, contrast. I personally don't use contrast much in my images. I prefer to do it manually in Photoshop afterwards. Um, Shadows, you can see we've lost a bit of detail in here by lowering that black point. So if we increase that a little bit, you can see that detail is coming back. Exposure, I'm happy with where the wave's sitting at the moment, but we're going to try and fix that sky with a graduated filter in a moment. So I'd be pretty happy with these settings as they are. Um, moving down, we have texture, clarity and dehaze. Let's take a moment to talk about clarity. Um, when I first started editing, 
Clarity is great. Everyone loves clarity. You just pump it up and it makes your image look like it's edited. The more and more you learn about editing, the less and less you'll use of this. Um, so let's just skip the part where you use it and let's just not use it from now on. Um, there is a time and a place for clarity. Things that it looks great on is clouds, which I'll show you again in a moment. Um, sand, rocks, textural things. But when you use this slider, it's affecting the entire image. So if I bump that up to 100%, you can tell it's just made this image over contrasty, punchy, way stylized. If that's what you're into, fantastic. Go for that. But I think being more selective in the way that you use this tool is the way to go. Texture is basically a form of sharpening. Again, if we increase it to 100%, um, you can see there that it's sharpened the face of the wave. Again, I'd recommend not using this. Um, there's just better ways to do it in Photoshop. But if you're not confident going into Photoshop at the moment, then for sure, I think the name of the game with these things is moderation, so just don't push them too far. Dehaze is something that you do use, but it's shot specific. Uh, underwater photography really benefits from dehaze, um, as well as obviously if it's hazy. So basically I very rarely use these three items, um, but again, it's a personal preference, do whatever makes you happy. Now we have vibrance and saturation. So you have a few options about saturation. One, you can do it in Photoshop when we jump in there. Second, down further, you have individual saturations. Um, or third, you can use these ones here. Typically, I tend to not use these two and I do it in post-production in Photoshop. But if you're not confident jumping in there, like I said, for now, let's just say we're gonna increase the vibrance and I'll leave the saturation alone. So when you're going through your images specifically, if you've taken photos of people, it's better to use vibrance rather than saturation. Saturation affects the entire image where vibrance tends to leave out skin tones. And if you oversaturate skin tones, you're gonna run into muddy faces. Not cool. So if you are taking photos of people, maybe just stick to vibrance, moderation. Uh, if it's landscapes, waves, all that kind of stuff, saturation might be your friend, but we're gonna learn how to do it way better later. Um, next comes down to curves. Curves probably is the most important tool in Photoshop in my mind. Uh, again, everyone's workflow is different, but what you can do with curves specifically when we get into Photoshop is phenomenal. Um, the basic principle of it is if you're going to use it, it's just creating a subtle S-curve. You can see that's added a lot of contrast to the image. For this one, I'm going to leave it because of the correction we did before and I don't think it needs it. So then you come down to sharpening. Sharpening I do use. It doesn't have a super dramatic effect as you can see, um, but it can help just bring out a little bit more detail. Noise reduction, if you're shooting uh, high ISO photos, night stuff, then yep, noise reduction is your friend. So you can punch that up a little bit. This was shot middle of the day, so I don't think I need it for this one. Um, moving down, HSL, hue, saturation and luminosity. This is a colour specific targeting. So if I desaturate the aquas, this image nearly goes to black and white. So this is the more refined way of doing your saturation levels in Camera Raw because stylistically you can make some pretty cool effects by just targeting one specific colour. So if I was to target the aquas and I wanted to bring more attention to this area in the photo, I've increased the saturation of those aquas, I can go to luminance and I can increase the light value of those. You can see there as I slide it. What that's doing for me is drawing more attention to these areas and that's the kind of composition I'm going for in this photo. With hue, 
you can target these specific colors and if you're not happy if it's too green or you want it more green you can push that aqua towards green or you can push it back more towards blue and this I'm going to push it a little bit more towards the blue side and happy days split toning I personally don't use it ever um, there's better ways to do it in Photoshop and if you're just learning this program I'd probably stay away from here because you can get some pretty funky results um, it's basically split into highlights and shadows so obviously for an example if I punch the saturation right up I'm going to bring all these yellows into the highlights and if I punch the saturation up I'll bring all these blues into the shadows you can create a pretty stylized image like this but it is brutal um, so yeah proceed with caution on that one optics remove chromatic aberration if you're using cheap gear cheaper camera cheaper lenses you want to tick that box chromatic aberration is a like rainbow flaring on the edge of detail on the corners of shots uh, if you zoom into your images 100% sometimes you'll see like a purple and a green line next to the outline of something that's what chrom chromatic aberration is so removing that the program's going to do its best to just fix it use profile corrections is going to read the metadata from the camera and the lens and it's going to apply a correction to make it look more real it's going to remove bends in your photos uh, and lens distortion in effects we've got grain uh, which can be nice to use but again there's a better way to do it in photoshop so we're just going to skip that for now then it comes to vignetting um, vignetting you do use but again it's shot specific some images especially if you're taking photos of people and the person is central vignetting is a great way to separate them from the background if i use it on this photo for example i can just add a bit more a bit more of a dynamic feel to the image so moving along we have the crop tool um, it's pretty self-explanatory you can crop the image with it i like this image as a full frame so i'm going to leave it then we move on to spot healing um, I'd recommend while you're learning to just stay away from this as well uh, we will cover it in further detail and a better way to do it in Photoshop which brings us to brushes brushes are the way that we're going to learn how to edit our photos in saying that the, the brush in camera raw here is a little bit brutal to use so we're going to not use it if you do need to use it it's always good um, to just use it gently or just use it in moderation say for example I wanted to increase this area of the wave uh, the bump up the exposure I just drag and then I can just bump it up a tiny bit um, the key with using brushes is using them gently uh, obviously if you go ahead and do that it's just going to look rubbish um, so you should be able to just not really notice the change that you're doing and that brings us to graduated filters so you can see this guy is pretty blown out and if I drop a filter a graduated filter from the top down and then I decrease the exposure in that it's going to recover all of the detail in the sky and the way that the graduated filters work it goes from full effect to zero effect on the bottom line so you can see if I drag it over the wave it's darkening that too so it's just a matter of playing with where it sits right and I'm just going to increase the black a little bit there to make it not so dark and you can see here I've gone over the wave which has darkened that white and this little black area here so up here there's an eraser if I just click that eraser tool I can then erase it from that area and now I'm left with just the effect up in the sky radial filters is basically the same as graduated filters you click and drag a circle and then you can affect an area inside or I can go up to here to invert and I can invert it and affect an area outside radial filters is what we're going to use for astral photography 
uh, editing, which we'll run through in another video. Uh, they are super useful and they are nice and gentle, but for this image, we don't need it. So you can see with the effects that we've done, our histogram up here has changed. Um, so we're going to go back into basic correction and we're just going to fix that up. So if I increase the whites, drop the blacks, I'm just going to even out that histogram a little bit more with a bit of contrast. So you can see we've finished editing our photo now. Um, be happy to put this one forward. Uh, and you can see what we've done, it's not, it's not a great deal. It's literally a tiny bit of contrast. We've dropped the highlights, increased the shadows, up the whites, dropped the blacks increase the vibrance we've just altered the hue of the tonal range of the aquas we've altered the saturation of the aquas and we've altered the luminance of the aquas um, we've added a tiny bit of vignette and we've added a single graduated filter so there's nothing to be scared of in this panel but like i said you can use it for your photo editing until we start learning a bit more about photoshop this same process we've just been through now is exactly the same as Lightroom. There's all the same features in Lightroom as we've just run through. So you can take exactly what you've learnt here, go straight into Lightroom and you should be able to do it. So if we want to have a quick look at what we started with and what we finished with, we can jump down here and have a quick look. This is our raw image and this is our corrected image. Pretty big difference, we haven't done a great deal to it and I'm pretty happy with the results. So jump into Photoshop, pick a file, start playing around, I'd love to see your results. Cheers.